and this is a really good place to get gas and just keep driving. But it worked in our favour this time because we got in absolutely free. <laughs> and here we did. I'm breaking neck, he said. You've been, I've known you for 20 years and you've been old since then. <laughs> Somebody thought we were twins, don't forget that. No, that's, either, that's either really good for me or really bad for you. You, you decide. We're not twins. Welcome back to Brazen Brits. I am Lawrence. And I'm Natalie. <laughs> That's the first time we've done an official introduction on this trip. So we are typically an RV channel. We are doing Route 66 on motorcycles for a bit of a change. And this is day 19, right? It is, yeah. Day 19, we are leaving Death Valley. We're staying at the ranch at Death Valley. It's very nice. We did splash out a bit. It's expensive. In fact, everything expensive is expensive in Death Valley. Oh, yes. <laughs> you have a choice of like two places, two restaurants, two everything. But uh, it's a really nice place. Uh, everything's been fine. Loved it. But now we are headed to Barstow. So we're heading back on the route. We had a bit of a detour. We went to Vegas, go back and check that video out. Uh, and then we did Death Valley, go back and check that video out. Yes. And now we're heading to Barstow. So we have, there isn't really any stopping places between here and there, is there? No but McDonald's we, today. <laughs> yeah, we're very upset about that, but we may find some stuff on the way. So yes. let's hit the road. We're loading up the bikes now. We'll hit the road and then we will see you there. I set my navigation before we hit the, before we left the hotel room. So we've been loading up the bikes and whenever I move slightly more than 10 left. feet, it tells me to turn left and then turn left and then turn left. At the next landing, turn left. I'm saying it again, look. I'm gonna hold my phone here and it'll probably say it. You might wait now. Now you're videoing it. No, she's she's camera After shy. After 600 feet, bear left and then bear left. Take me to the ruins, aquifers and springs. Baby ferns and curling, every living thing. Be to me a mother, both hands. As you come out of Death Valley, uh, you probably need gas, or we needed gas. You could have filled up in Death Valley, but what was the gas price, John? Oh gosh, eight. It was like twenty-seven or something. Nine bucks or something. Well, we or nine. we have to fill up with ninety-one, so it's like nine dollars, I think. Anyway, so we decided to stop here. There's a Chevron here. It's still expensive. We're in California, but uh, it was a little bit less. And then we stopped and had some lunch at the Crowbar Inn. Shoshone. Um, there's also a museum here. Uh, we quickly walked around there. Yeah, Shoshone. Shoshone. Uh, so yeah, this is a really good place to get gas and just keep driving. Don't eat here. The fries were good. The fries were good. And I hate fries. Yeah, just keep driving. <laughs> So in the true brazen Brit style, we have arrived late to the Calico ghost town. But it worked in our favor this time because we got in absolutely free. <laughs> she was like, look, we're gonna be closed in like an hour. So just, just go on up. Can I, can I just say, we have full respect for that because a lot of places would have still charged us knowing that we only had like 40 minutes to look around the whole thing. So that was very nice for her. She didn't have to do that. No, she didn't. That was very nice of her. Yeah, so off, uh, off camera, John just said, uh, he thinks the place looks a little bit fake, which is pretty much because it is. I mean, it's not fake, it was a real town. Um, but actually, so this was a real town in 1881. It was another mining town, same as the other places we've seen. Um, but it basically just ran into the ground. And then a guy named uh, Walter Knott, just off the top of my head, uh, he restored it in 1951. And then in 1966, he donated it to Bernardino County. Now, I don't know why, I'm wondering whether it wasn't generating enough income for him. So he just wanted so to get rid just, of it? He just got rid of it, yeah. But uh, anyway, so there were two mines here. There was silver and borax. And over its lifetime, it just off the top of my head, it they actually um, produced 
86 million dollars worth of silver here. 86 million. Can you imagine almost... if they'd done 45 million in borax as well? Yeah, but oh my god, how did you do that? That off the top of your head? Yeah, I know, just 45 just... million in borax. Yeah, that's crazy. That's almost your annual salary. Almost. Hey, Natalie. Yeah. How many people do you think lived here in its heyday? 60. 60? In its heyday, yeah. in its prime, 1,200? 3,500 people. Ah, oh, I was close. Yeah, and actually, the sheriff came here from a place called, just off the top of my head, they came here from uh, Carroll County to Mississippi. We've been there. And came here from Carroll County in 1868 and then they elected him the sheriff and i think he actually owned one of the mines and then sold it for three hundred thousand dollars that's interesting isn't it but when he was here he was elected sheriff when there was only like a hundred people here and wow. then there was three and a half thousand within a couple of years in a tiny little jail cell in a tiny yeah there's only one tiny little jail cell this is actually his office by the way this was the sheriff's office but uh yeah and then so he was there was basically three and a half thousand people at its prime with 42 mines that's it's oh, a lot isn't it yeah so it is compared to where other places we've been like oatman that was yeah. cool yeah still commercial you still everything every shop is a gift yeah place but they haven't changed it that much whereas this place i don't imagine they've changed it that much a lot of the stuff I think is original, but they've had to obviously rebuild the other stuff because for 80 years it just went to ruin. So they've had to rebuild stuff, but it is very commercial. One thing I've noticed, the best thing about this is all the stuff scattered around that is the old original stuff. So it's not even the building. Yeah, you've got mining carts, you've got yeah. stagecoaches. Yeah, and that's all the original stuff. That's the stuff that I'm finding interesting here rather than the buildings. Yeah, not Dr. Aria's drugstore. Yeah. Is it really called Dr. Aria? No idea. We're going to find out. But yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's all these little bits. That's the interesting stuff. Okay, this is kind of cool. This is the blacksmith shop. You can't go in, but apart from the fire extinguisher over there, I imagine that looks pretty electric original. Pretty original. Well, there is an electric light, yeah. But I mean, but the rest of it. The rest of it, including like the floor and stuff. You've got the old anvils there and stuff. I think that's original. I'd agree. A lot of the tools, it's just been left there. They've just updated it so you can see in there. Now here's another, what's it called? A stagecoach. Stagecoach. And some old original wheels and stuff. And some original benches for people to sit on. John's getting upset because they keep building these towns on the mountain sides. Not very easy to get to and he's got to walk uphill. He's getting old now. Now I was already old when I started. You, you've been, I've known you for 20 years and you've been old since then. <laughs> All he keeps saying is, I'm 10 years older than you. And you're not even 10 years older than me. Like eight. You just look it. Whatever. Someone called us twins the other day. Exactly. So I can't be doing too badly. Quite, like, seriously, she thought we were twins. That literally is you. <laughs> That sign is you. It's so cute. On, we are in Dorsey's doghouse. What was your name, sorry? Jennifer. And we're here talking to Jennifer and uh, it's all dog products, which is annoying because I was just looking to buy some donuts and things, but apparently they're just for dogs. Um, anyway, this is the most important dog here in the town or was in the town. Uh, and it is the male dog. What is it, a border collie? which were very, very, very rare, apparently, back in the 18... In the southwest. Uh, 1886? 1890s. 1890s. God, so yeah. close. And yeah, they were very, very uh, rare. So anyway, the dog's a hero, right? Yeah, he was. He was the, one of the most important citizens in the town. It's one of the most important citizens in the town. And why is that? Just because he delivered the mail? Because he delivered the mail, and the mail could come more often with him carrying it than when... The, really? Yeah. Because he had to scurry up over the mountain. Oh, of course. So it was a very rugged trail. It was a mile and a half. The trail so they would just put the mail in, in... In in his bags. And, and say, off you go. Yep. They'd send him on his way on the trail, and he'd go to the mines over there and deliver the mail. No way. He had to be smart enough. He had to go up and down ladders. He had to cross ladders spanning voids. He did it all like he had been trained to do it. And I have a theory about why he took to it so easy. Go on. As I was reading, and I read a lot of history of the high desert, is there was a United States Cavalry troop in the area at the same time he appeared 
in town here. He came into town astray during a thunderstorm. Wow. And I have a feeling he got separated from his troop. They were probably moving out. Mm -hmm. By the time they knew that he recognized that he wasn't with them, they were already a long ways away. And the cavalry at that time would not have gone back for a dog. Wow. So he was just a, a military trained dog mm -hmm. that then just took to it. The military, the United States military started their dog training program during prior to the Civil War. They actually used dogs on the Civil War battlefields to deliver troop line communications. Mm -hmm. And I think he was probably a dog in that same training that the military was doing, even though it was, you know, many years after the Civil War they continued their training program. They also would have had access to that breed of dog on the East Coast. Ah, uh, okay, so they were only rare here. Very clever, that is fascinating. Our dog can sit sometimes when we ask him to. Right here behind me is another building built into the rocks and they've used the probably mined rock to actually you know, build it out a bit, but it's very safe under that big rock there. It is. Why are you laughing at me, Natalie? It looks like it's about to fall over. Anyway. It does look like it's about to fall over, I agree, but it's obviously been there for a while, so. Look at this stupid grin. It's because he found a Zoltar machine, the one from Big with Tom Hanks. It's cool. You're so happy. It's cool. <laughs> Did you use it? No, I was just scared. No, I can tell. Still look old. Somebody thought we were twins, don't forget that. <laughs> no, that's, either, that's either really good for me or really bad for you. You, you decide. We just ran down the hill to go on a train ride, but the train ride is an extra five dollars to get on. And we're not going to do it, it's pretty late. We also, there is a mine tour you can go on. That's an extra four dollars each. So we're not doing that either, even though we didn't pay. But the reason why is because we want to go and check around and we're about to get kicked out. So we want to go walk around some other stuff. So we're going to do that stuff uh, and then see what else is around. So the problem with, uh, with this being so commercial is that I don't know what's real and what's, what isn't. And so this mine track looks really cool because it goes into this building, but I think it's just fake. Like, I'd really wish they'd keep it like natural. All right, well, this stuff looks original. Don't you think? Mm. Yeah, so I reckon these are the original things. Let's find out if we can find out what this is. A big sign there. <laughs> this is a silver bowl, apparently. What's a silver bowl? It looks like a man-made entertainment area. Yeah, so that, okay, that's the silver bowl. They obviously, it says saloon up there, but that's obviously man-made. This says Chinatown. So this must be like real ruins, I think. If not, they haven't done a very good job recently of building it. Right, Nelly, thoughts on Calico, Cal Calico, Calico? I think I preferred the one in Death Valley. Yeah, do you know what? I think we're spoiled because we've been through all of Route 66 and seen all this really genuine old stuff. Yeah. yeah. Death Valley one was awesome. And then we're coming here where... It's like a, a little bit park. fake. It little is a theme bit, park. Yeah. yeah, it's all a little bit fake. Um, and it obviously was real at one point. And then they've redone it. And also, I think some of the health and safety stuff kind of ruins it. The signs everywhere saying Barriers. watch your step and there's handrails yeah. and... Which I get it, like, you know. Nobody you know. wants to be sued. Well, no, they don't want to be sued and, you know, they kind of need that, need to make it, you know, accessible for everyone. Yeah. So everyone can enjoy it. But yeah, it's, um, I think that commercialized part of it kind of ruined it. Especially when you pay entry and then have to pay extra for other stuff. Other, yeah. I know we didn't pay entry, but it's really cool though. I think $8 a person is worth coming here. If we had it's more cheap. time. Yeah. Yeah, if we true. had more time to wander around and have a beer and have some food and enjoy it, then I think that would be cool. So overall, yes, I think you should come here. Five out of 10. <laughs> Uh, 
she needs to go to a grocery store and get some stuff washing powder we need to do laundry so I said that's fine there's a dollar tree right next door she said no there's a 99 cent store across the road we'll go there a dollar tree is not dollar anymore it's dollar 25 which is just wrong they're going to change all of their names here's a fun fact that everyone finds about the equivalent of the dollar store in the UK is called obviously we have pounds great British pounds GBP for short and uh, yeah, so instead of calling it the dollar store, we call it Poundland. I love to take Natalie to Poundland. Sometimes, John, I take Natalie to Poundland. Yes, I know. There's a sign up there that says pudding. Okay. Isn't like it sticky. Called dessert here. I don't know. No. Where am I going? Washing Looking powder. for washing powder. How much was the laundry detergent? Well, I, hope, well, I just realised it's not 99 cents, $7. is it? $7.99. Forget it, how much was it, John? It's the only one without a label on. That says 99. I should have taken out a pound land. It was $4.09. For what? For taxes. But for everything, we for bought everything. chocolate as well. Yeah. How much was the washing powder? 99 cents. The washing, what do they call it here? Laundry detergent. Yes, laundry detergent. It was 99 cents. It would have been $1 across the road over there. But Poundland's no tax. Dollar Tree. Why is there no tax? Because it's England. It's included. Oh, that's true. Yeah, so actually ah. in England, when I take Natalie to Poundland, it would be four it's pounds. actually going to be less. I can't remember what the tax is. It's high over there, isn't it? 20%. Probably, but it's included, so we don't know. Tax is 20%, so it's actually like 80p. That's true. So we made it to Barstow. It's not what I thought it was going to be, although it is a lovely view in the background out here. That's nice from our view from our motel. Uh, but it's not what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a bit quiet, quieter and quainter, don't you think? Yeah, it's very commercial. It is. There is there is a lot of Route 66 things here. You know, everything's kind of signposted Route 66 tire shop and stuff like that. But there is some stuff on the way out towards LA that we're going to do next week. So we will show you that on our way out. Um, but thank you for watching. If you would, here's another video that we think you would enjoy. Uh, if you could subscribe, that would be fantastic. And don't forget to hit the bell button so you know when we upload new videos. And you can also join and become a... Brazier. Thank you, Jonathan. A Brazier uh, and become a member of our channel. And thank you to everyone below for supporting us. We really do appreciate it. We're on the last stretch now. We have like two more episodes, maybe three, before we get to the end of Route 66 on bikes. And then we are back in the RV on some stuff that we're planning already. So we will see you next week.